Mr. George St. Pierre, how are you, sir? Doing fantastic. Thank you. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, so you are the UFC's former welterweight champion, former middleweight champion, Hall of Famer, martial arts legend. I've seen you doing movies on the big screen. Uh, now you have a clothing line coming out. And dare I call you the GOAT? <laughs> well, it, it, being the GOAT, is, it's, it's uh, something very subjective. You can ask different people, they will have different opinion. <laughs> that is true. Uh, but the things you've accomplished are just out of this world. So I got to know, are you even human? <laughs> no, I've been, uh, I've been uh, made in the lab laboratory by aliens. No, no, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a human being and... Um, yeah, man, I, uh, I've tried to do my best. And uh, yeah, I mean, you talk about the status of GOAT. Is, is, there's a lot of guys that could be GOAT. You know what I mean? There, there's a, uh, depend what you look for. If you look for the guy that has fight the most, com the more competition, uh, the someone who has, was undefeated all, all his, uh, during all his career, depend what, what kind of things you're looking uh, looking for. Does it make you feel weird when people say that, when people call you the GOAT? I mean, it's, you want to, of course, everybody wants to be humble and have I, the humility, but does it make you feel weird? No, I, I know I, I, I perform very well. I'm, I'm, among, I'm, among the, I'm among the best in my sport. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it, you know, like I, I'm, I've been honest. I, I think I'm, I deserve to be among the best of my sport. I don't know if I'm the best, but I, I'm, I did very well, you know, in the sport. I was champion for a long time, and uh, there, but there, there's also a lot of other guys that deserve that uh, that status as well. That's very humble of you to say. Um, but the, the level of success you reached, it's remarkable. Uh, so, where does your drive come from? Was it something you were born with, or was it something you developed over time, or where where does it all stem from? Uh, I I had an up, an obsession uh, when I was competing. I was obsessed. Of becoming the best, I, I did not only wanted to be champion. I wanted to be the best. And and at that time, when I was competing, it was very important for me of what the fans, what people think about me. And I always wanted to be known as the best. I was not only competing against the guy that I was about to fight. I was competing against the other guys in other division to be the best. Um. The reason I, and that was very important when I was competing, I was very competitive. And I think that drive that I had helped me perform at my best. However, the reason why I took my retirement is I realized at one point in my life, I was like, what's important in life, it's not what other people think about you, that you shouldn't care much about that. What you should care is what people who love you and who you love think about you. That's what really matter. And when that happened in my mind, when that shift happened, that's when I told myself, I said, you know what? I'm done. It's finished. It's time to call, to call, to call it. You know what I mean? Because I, I had a shift of mentality and I was not as hungry anymore as I used to, as I used to be. So that therefore, that's why I retired. Yeah. Uh, and you know, sports like football or baseball, basketball, you, um, you, you'll see players um, as they age through their career, you know, they might throw more interceptions or they might miss shots. But in MMA, we have to watch our heroes get beat up. And that's tough. Um, but you're an exception. You're an exception to that. Uh, do you have advice for other fighters who, you know, might need help or come up with a better way to go out on their own terms? Oh yeah, 100%. My, my advice would be make your money, cash out and get the hell out of here. Preserve your health, especially in, the, in our sport. It's not a game, it's, it's, it's very serious business. You can't say you play basketball, you play hockey, but you don't play fighting. And I always wanted to retire on top. And maybe I feel that I left money on the table when I retired because I could have, I think, wins a couple other fights, you know, against the best in the world. 
but I had a sh mental shift. And what I, when that occurred for me, that was the sign that I should retire. And when, even if you, you feel you leave money on the table, I know that when you retire and your stock is high, when you turn around, there's a lot of opportunities that are open to you. Those opportunities, those doors might not have been open if I would have retired on a losing straight. Because you want to retire when your stock is high. So the money that you think that you lost, you left on the table, you will make it in the long term. You will make more money. And on top of that, you will preserve your health and well-being, which is the most important thing. So I always see, I always found out that it's kind of sad when I see a lot of some of the legend retiring too late. It, it hurts me. Uh, me too, definitely. It's it's it sucks. It's like, it's one of the worst parts about the whole sport, but there's no, there's, it's, it's hard to get around it. Um, there's different between competing in a sport to be the best in the world, like fighting for a world title in the UFC and, and try to hang there. And, and, and even if you're not in the, the, the champion, you, you wanted to become the number one contender. So you're fighting the best. And fighting, for example, a, a novelty fight, a fight that is a, more a no, novelty fight for the fans, for yourself. Like uh, people ask me about the, the Tyson Roy Jones fight, and, and I'm not against it because that was a novelty fight. Mm -hmm. If Mike Tyson would have wanted to come back, maybe to fight Tyson Fury or, or you know, one of these guys, or, 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 or Ujix or, or, you know, Deontay, Deontay or, or Right now, I would be against him because, you know, that's not where I want to see him. I'm a fan of Mike Tyson. When he was fighting and he was in his prime, yes, he could have done it. But now he's not where he was. But to see him come back and fight Roy Jones, I was, I was happy because for him, it's a novelty fight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a fight against another man who's a legend, who's at the same place in his life, where, like a similar spot in his life. So that was okay. That was a fan a fan fight a novelty fight this there's nothing wrong with it for me and and, and for me but it, it, when i see guys that try to hold on to their dream to become the best too long fighting against the the the, the very best of their sport this is sad this is a different story during your career, did you ever find it difficult to maintain a balance between work and your personal life? Uh, yeah, it's very hard because when you're a fighter, you have to be very selfish. Everything is about your, your performance, it's about you, 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 uh, me. How can I get myself better? How can I improve this? How, with everything that I've done, how can I be how can I stay on top for the competition not reaching me? How can I still improve? They say you cannot fix something that is not broken, but that's not true. You can make it always better. How can you improve, improve, improve? And it's all about this mindset. It's, it's a very, being a fighter, to be successful, you need to be very selfish. So it's very hard to have a good personal life while you're while you're living like this you know it's a because you always try to come first and in life that's not how it should be you should put people that you love first i mean what would you say are some of the biggest sacrifices you had to make to reach that status that people might overlook or not expect well it's uh it's not the big thing it's the small thing that you do every day for a very long time that's what gets you um the stress i think that for me the stress was the 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 hardest part for me it took a lot uh, it took a lot from me the stress it's very stress i i never really liked to fight i always did it because i wanted to use that as a benchmark to, to get me where i wanted to be in life to have the freedom the the money the the wealth the health and i did it but i didn't like the to fight i like the sport i like the science of it but to be able to, to step in the octagon in front of million of people and and to fight i, I never enjoyed it i i uh, i uh, i did it because it was i needed to do it you know what i mean in order to that was a sacrifice i needed to do in order to to live the life that i have wow um i mean you did and you reached those levels and, and you know as you rose to fame 
how did you stay grounded and, and how did you remain true to yourself as the money started flowing in, your notoriety went up, the fights were getting harder? I, I, I am lucky that I have a good family uh, that is always close to me, that I have a very good of friends that are not afraid to tell me the truth. They, they are not yes men. They, they, if I'm doing something wrong, they will tell me, say, George, what you did is wrong. You should have done that. And, and that's why I think it helps me to stay grounded. That's huge. I, I think I, I'm a big believer in that as well. You know, if you love someone, you got to tell them not what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. And that yeah, can be uncomfortable at times. When, when I have a friend that is not afraid to tell me what he thinks and, and I know he's my real friend. You know what I mean? Even if we disagree, but he tell me the truth, he's my real friend. He's not a yes man. He's not someone that's gonna, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I recognize sometimes. That's love. Friend. That's real love. Yeah. What would you say was the most difficult for you? Winning the welterweight title, winning the welterweight title back, or coming out of retirement to capture the middleweight belt? Hmm. I think that the the hardest thing, it's not even that, is to, once you're on top, is to stay on top. It's hard to become champion, but it's even harder to stay champion every time. It's, it's, it's a big weight that you, that you carry on your shoulder. And it's a lot of stress. It's a, it's, it's a long thing. It's, it's not only one fight because you become the target and everybody talks and everybody trying to find a way to, to find a breach in your in your in your armor and it's very hard it's very stressful you feel like you're under siege uh 24 7 you know what i mean it's, it's very hard when you're not champion and you're working towards your goal to become a champion you don't feel like you're under siege you know you feel like you're uh, you're climbing you know you, you you're getting there it's not as stressful but when you're to to stay champion is the hardest thing yeah, they say only the king knows how heavy the crown is. So I, I completely understand that. My Usman, Adesanya, uh, uh, and Ganu are going to start feeling it pretty soon as well. Wukanovski, I'm sure they, they will tell you the same thing, you know? It's, uh, it's a, it takes, and the more fight you have, the more, the, the more people expect you to do more and more and more. And it, 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 it gets to a time that it, it, it gets very heavy. Well, looking at the UFC right now, um, who, what, which fighters are you impressed by their performance? Yeah. There's a lot of guys like uh, Wokanovski. Um, I enjoy Kamaru's man, of course. Uh, I like uh, Nganu. I like um, uh, Israel Adesanya. I really enjoy uh, seeing uh, last time uh, Glover Teixeira winning making a big upset i was like even myself i was surprised i was like wow he's, he's so good at his age to become world champion i think it was very inspiring uh now he's fighting this weekend i, I really enjoy watching them fight uh Pochasco, i really like to watch him fight as well it's going to be an interesting fight there's a lot of guys i really enjoy to watch uh fighting Shum uh, Kaz kamzat shumayev i really enjoy watching him fight um makachev uh, Oliveira. Uh, there's a lot of guys. I, I, I like to watch the best guys. To, Conor McGregor, uh, I like him because he creates so much uh, animosity. There's different guys I like to watch fight for different reasons. Is it hard to watch and not get the itch to want to get back in there? Oh, man. I, I, what is the opposite for me. When I watch them fight, I'm like, Man, I'm so happy I don't do this this shit for a living anymore. <laughs> I, I I had a mental switch. I I don't have that that thing. I I don't I don't see it this way anymore. Man, that's a blessing. Well, tell me about teaming up with Blue Chip to launch your clothing line. Uh, I mean, you got hats, shirts, hoodies. How did this venture come about? Yeah. So when you're uh, you know you always want to leave a legacy for for your fans to be remembered, and um. You, I don't compete anymore. So I team up with Blue Chip. It's a great company. They're they they're the best in their their field of it in their field. And um, I have a friend Eric William that he shot a lot of uh, pictures throughout my career. So the pictures are very authentic. They reflect 
all the value that I stand for uh, as an athlete, as a martial artist. And um, this collection is really for the fans. It reflects different emotions. And uh, it's very interesting. It's, it's a very authentic collection to me. And it's, it has been made for the fans. Uh, do you think UFC, current UFC fighters could do something similar? Or do you know if their contracts prohibit them using their likeness to sell apparel? I am not sure. I think they, they can't do it while they are active. They have to wait. They are retired. And I think it's good, too, because when you're retired, once you're, you don't compete, that's a way to prolong your legacy. You know what I mean? To, to, for your legacy, you want to leave something. It's important. Well, if there's one thing that you could change about the UFC or the sport in general, what do you think it would be? Well, I, there, there will be a lot of things. The contract, the, the, uh, I, think all the, I think it should be a partnership. All the best fighters that help the UFC grow should touch a piece of the pie of the, the pay-per-view revenue. This is very important. I think the fighters should be able to have their brand uh, to showcase their brand, they should be able to 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 uh, to uh, yeah to 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 promote their brand. Um, I think the UFC fighters shouldn't be tied up with UFC once they retired. I think the UFC fighters should have an assurance for medicals that is that reach beyond the end of their career with UFC. I, th I think it, sh it should be after, you You know, if you, spend, if, you, if you fight for a very long time for this organization, maybe you get brain damage. And those damage, they might not showcase while you're an active fighter. They might showcase later on. So you should be able to touch a, a nash assurance or, or some kinds of health benefit to this. Uh, there, there's a lot of things I think that should be done. Um, things are better than the... It will get better. I think it's 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 a it's a still a new sport, and I mean it's not a new sport, but it's new. We kind of rediscover it in the recent years. Uh, there's a lot of work to do to increase uh, to make to improve the, the 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 condition of the fighters. I think it will happen. Is but in order to happen, all the fighters need to get together to 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 make it happen. And that, it, it has been tried before, but it it was unsuccessful. Why do you think it was unsuccessful? And why is it so hard to get everybody on the same page? Because it's money. Everybody wanted to, to pull the thing on their side. And, and I think that's why. I think that the intention was good, but there was the way it was managed. It was maybe because of money. You know what I mean? I think, I think it should be someone is doing it. Is doing it. it should be truly because you want he wants to do it and he doesn't care about the money. It should be someone that is maybe that has so much money he doesn't care, but he, he's such such a fan of the a fan of the sport that he that he does it just for you know what I mean? For for the, the condition. Yeah, for, for the condition of to increase to improve the condition of the fighters. Maybe someone like George St. Pierre. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, but right now I have a lot of uh a lot of other, other things that I need to take care of before I reach that uh, status. But uh, I'm always there for the fighters. You know, if I, if I like the idea, if, something, if there's something I can do to, to help, I, I'm always there. You know what I mean? I got one more question for you. So I, I see you on social media. I saw you pin Gordon Ryan, the grappling goat. Uh, yes. What are the chances we see you competing in a jujitsu arena? Uh, I, I don't say, you know, it's, it would be the same thing I was talking about, like a novelty fight. It would be fun. If it's well organized, if it's well done, I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. I, I was ready to go for a, a boxing fight against Oscar de la Hoya quite oh, recently. Yeah, yeah it, it was a modified boxing fight with bigger gloves. I would have done it. Uh, if it's for a, maybe for a good cause, a charity, um, to showcase that I don't, because I'm not competing to prove that I'm the best fighter in the world anymore. I'm competing 
I don't just to showcase. I, I don't take myself too seriously. It's something is well organized, and it's a, a, a challenge that that excite me. Maybe, and I don't say never. You know, it's, it has to be a novelty fight, something that for the fans. You know what I mean? I dig it. Uh, well, how can people follow you on your journey? What are your handles, your social media outlets? How can people come along? Yeah, uh, I'm working with a lot of things right now. Uh, I'm working with base block uh, equipment, fitness equipment, base, bo- base blocks, uh, the, the, the pro line. I'm also with, um, I have a supplement line that is out, uh, the Warrior. It's with heart and soil. You can uh, check it out. Warrior, it's a lever and heart that has been desiccated in a process called we, we call dry freeze in order to maximize the nutrient. It's uh, organs. Um, I have also a, a vodka that will come out pretty soon. Blue chip, a line of clothing, a collection that is coming out. So I'm working also on uh, different uh, movies, opportunities. So I can't wait. It's a lot of, uh, I'm more busy than I ever been. It's a lot of fun right now. I love it. And, and you definitely deserve everything that's coming your way. Well, thank you. George, thank you so much for taking out the time to speak with me. And thank you for being such a great ambassador for the sport. I mean, You dedicated your life to your art, and it doesn't seem like you ever lost your way doing so. So it's truly inspiring, and you are the GOAT, whether you want to admit it or not, and I wish you success in everything you do. Thank you, my friend. Take good care. Cheers.